Hi. I'm Brittany. I'm Brad. And we are Quarantine Audio Shelf. Woo. Me in the, in the robe in the morning with my Bloody Mary. Okay. Let's do this. Yes. So today we are returning with a review of All Your Twisted Secrets by Diana Urban. We have not done a review in so long. We have not. We really have not. Do you want to tell them what this book is about? Yes, please. Okay. So this is a book about a bunch of dweebs <laughs> who are <laughs> who are on a scholarship track to go to their best favorite college, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, so a part of this scholarship is that they get invited to this fancy dinner. And when this group of kids gets this dinner, they realize that they are all set up for death, for murder, for secrets. So much murder. They basically have to pick one person to die in order to be released from this room that they are locked in. And so then we start having secrets unveiled through flashbacks of the previous school year and what led up to this night. And yes. who is behind it all? Who done it? It's a classic who done it. Classic. So we listened to the audiobook and the audiobook is narrated by Kate Rudd. And I feel like talking about her narration first and then we'll get into the content because there's a lot more content comments yes. we have. Let's, let's do the narration because we love Kate Rudd. Yes. We do. We do. Kate Rudd is awesome. She's a fantastic narrator. She made me like this book a little bit more than what I would have if I was physically reading it. Agreed. Because the characterizations, the vocalization, all the isations that she did with this novel was fantastic. Yes. She really put her all into all the characters. Except. 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 except Evan Bria. Oh, I thought we were going to say except again. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I only do two. Okay. <laughs> Priya. Why did she sound um. like Eeyore? On depression medication. Yes. Priya sounded like, I like what you said earlier. She was a sad, sad man. She was such a sad <laughs> man. I was like, why are you so sad, Priya? And why are you a man? You are a lady, maybe. <laughs> I don't Who know. Who are you, Priya? <laughs> Who did some, like, it just was it was too much. It was yes. too down in the dumps. She was always like gray. I, as soon as Priya came on the scene, I was like, here is a gray cloud because Eeyore, her voice. Bitch. Yes. <laughs> yes. And Priya was not that. Priya was, she was loving and she was caring and she like really wanted to do right by everybody. She wanted everyone to like her. Her voice mm -hmm. should have been chipper, not yes. sullen old hermit man living down by the sea yeah speaking of priya i just realized i forgot my medication uh-oh um i gotta get i gotta get eddie to get that medication for me soon yeah. but anyway but for reals priya it was it was a mess but my can i just talk about like kate rudd did a fantastic job overall though oh a hundred percent like her voices for the men i loved her voices for robbie and i love scott's voice diego and Diego's voice. Oh, Soothing sounds of Diego coming through your radio. Yes. Oh my, I actually like the singer Diego. Really hot, but anyway. The singer Diego. Uh-huh, there's a singer. One, oh, okay. one name, Diego. Diego. <laughs> Look him up, Google him. <laughs> but anyway, so I love the narration. I, I enjoyed this, the time hop, because I knew because of the, 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 quickness and the speed of her voice and the um the emotions that kate rudd had in her voice i knew when it was present day versus the past mm -hmm. whether it was a year ago whether it was a month ago whatever you knew the difference between past and within this hour of the book being told yeah absolutely and it was like so easy to follow with her voice there was no time where i was like okay i feel like i'm lost mm -hmm. i don't know who's talking right now um, there was none of that. It was just very succinct and nice. And I listened at 1.5. I was just going to say this. I listened at two speed, bitch. Ooh. And two speed. Sometimes with books, you cannot do that. We will say to the audience at home. Yes, but, but this. This was a book that you could listen to at a faster pace than 1.0. I started this book tub. Oh, oops. <laughs> book tub. <laughs> oh my God. That is <gasps> A spinoff. Yes. Booktub. Oh Nobody asked for it, but Nobody. everybody wants it. <laughs> exactly. 
but I started this book at 10.30 p.m. in the tub last night. Almost passed out because it was too damn hot. Oh, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> the vodka made me dehydrated. You had to hang out the window. I did. I had to hang out the window over the sink because I was about to vomit. <laughs> it was just too hot. We all but, been there. And we all been there. But anyway, I listened to this book at 10.30 p.m. And I finished it this morning with two hours left at about like 9 30. Yeah. I, I listened to it, you know, it's only a couple of hours. And yeah. that's how fast I got this book done. It was about how long? A nine hour book? It, it was think. a nine hour book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So nine hours. And then if you speed that up to two speed, it's like five and a half. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Five um, hours. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know how to do two. I guess it's just split in half. So we don't do nine. Math. No, we don't. We talk at a camera. So yeah, it was very easy to get done in a night. Um, I, I finished it in about a day because I took a break to watch TV because mm -hmm. um, that's the important thing in life. Did you watch and Zoe? Not yet. Oh my God. Thank I you. am so scared. I am so scared. Um, but I took a break to watch TV and then I finished it. So I would say that I finished it in one sitting if I had taken out my TV time. Because mm -hmm. um, I watched TV for about the same amount of time that I would have listened to this book. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was just such a, a nicely paced book with Kate's narration. Yes, yes. So, so let's get to the content. Let's get this, to the content. This content. Um... What to say? Uh, <laughs> we have a lot to actually say about this. So first of all, we have a question of why YA thrillers are lacking. Okay. This is the third one. I, I was telling you. Uh -huh. This is the third YA thriller slash YA, YA horror, whatever you want to call it, because someone, someone always ends up dead. Yes. This is the third one I've realized I don't think I like this genre. Yeah. Like, it's so unbelievable. There isn't any quality characters. All of the characters I hate. And it's like, I don't know if that, that's the author's point to make me hate each one to figure out, like, who did it. But you don't see Agatha Christie making me hate characters. Right. Or Sherry LaPena or Paula Hawkins or mm -hmm. Kimberly Bell and, like, Carpenter. All of them that do adult thriller. So that was, like, the comparison that we were kind of going through is that, like, young adult thriller – really they try to hang on to the YA genre there needs to be a message yeah and not so much that this is a mystery that this is a thriller like there always has to be like some sort of reason where if you have like Riley Sager there's not there's still a mystery but there's not really a lesson to be learned there's not it's just thrills it's mm -hmm. just to get your heart pumping and so with YA thrillers, like they always want to tie in a moral compass. And while I do like the moral that's in this, because mm -hmm. there, there is a, like, if you need help, please seek help for suicidal tendencies. Or if you're being bullied, please tell someone here mm -hmm. are the signs to look for if someone is suicidal so you can I, help them. Yes. I love the author's note at the end. Yes. The author's note at the end is great. It's perfect. But I, I still feel like it lost some of what the author was going for because of how the ending wrapped up just giving a a bad character a a freedom pass they they were bad but then now we have the sympathy yes mm -hmm. it just it lost me yeah i agree i agree um i definitely i and i feel like i feel like the characters are so whiny Yes. They're so YA. What is that word? Um, brooding and they're yeah. angsty. Yes. And I'm sorry, but I'm not trying to feel like I'm not trying to be annoyed by their angst while they're getting murdered or, mm -hmm. or threatened. Their lives, their lives are threatened. Mm -hmm. Like it just takes me out of it. Mm -hmm. And see, I think that this is a problem with a lot of like YA books in general, not just thrillers, is that they want they they are writing for a younger audience, and so they are mm -hmm. like. How are younger audiences today? Oh, well, yeah. they're whining. So what the person, the author is saying is that like these, these people that are reading my books are whiny, they're bullies, they are mean, or they're just doormats. Mm -hmm. And that's not true. That's absolutely like not how high schoolers or teenagers all are. 
Yeah. Especially the people that are picking up the books. Exactly. And, and this is coming from people who like YA. Like, yeah. we, we like the YA fantasy. We like, I, you know, I really enjoy contemporaries. And so I get that angst and I get that emotion from young adults. But then sometimes I, it's it, too much. It's too much. It's mm -hmm. like, what? And then I guess this is coming from adults because maybe a kid in high school reading this would be like, oh my God, this is my life. Like, oh my God. And I guess that's where their mind frame is. But guess what? Brad, we are not too old to remember what it was like in high school that's true like we need to hold that's on true. to those memories and onto those feelings of we were we were we were high schoolers at one point and these these are the types of books that would annoy me back then too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i i just feel like back then i would have put myself into those roles in the book you still can but I, and I think that's my problem is I can't with these. And I think that's why right. I've realized exactly. I am not, this, this genre is not for me. And it, right. it can be for anybody else, but not for me, girl. Not exactly. for me. Exactly. Exactly. Because it's very easy to put yourself in the shoes of a YA contemporary. Yes. You can absolutely do that. But with these YA thrillers, they just seem, they seem, they, they feel like they're going to the, the lengths of uh, Leanne Moriarty. Like they're mm -hmm. trying it, but then they just miss it with mm -hmm. the with the character that is the bad guy or the twist or the mystery. They just mm -hmm. they get almost there and then they drop it. Yeah. And then their publisher is probably like, well, we have to end this on this kind of note. Yeah. That um will make you look good. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like, I, I will tell you the ending shouldn't have been the ending. No. And I think we basically rewrote that ending to the mm -hmm. way it should have been. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another character probably should have died. Let's be mm -hmm. real. Spoiler oh, yeah. alert. Whatever. Someone dies at the end of the hour. Well, yeah. But, I mean, another character should have died. And that's what I got to say about that. Or even if they didn't, like, have a character die, if they didn't want to, like, push it to that length, have the character who's supposed to be the bad guy actually be held responsible by yes. a higher power. Like not just by their peers because they didn't freaking care about their mm -hmm. peers have them be held responsible by the police like that's mm -hmm. what happens in like adult thrillers is that the person who is the bad person gets tackled gets taken into custody or gets killed mm -hmm. and we don't feel sorry for them yes and but we always we always say at the end of those books they got what they got yes they got and in, it and in this one that character that that is is at the end and not with us anymore didn't actually get theirs their death is going to be a a sad thing for people people are going to remember this person for how they portrayed themselves to the community not necessarily their peers but then and the peers you, aren't going to be able to say anything negative because now it's a dead teen and if you yes. bad mouth a, a dead teen i was just gonna say that i was just gonna say that because now it's gonna be fl flowers on the roadside girl dead teen and that's really bad that's really sad but mm -hmm. that's what we've come to is at the end of this book i felt so bad mm -hmm. for the the character and when in reality the character is the reason behind the whole conflict mm -hmm. they are the reason behind a whole different mm -hmm. story that we are just flashing back to with our main character and maybe the reason because re the reason being as to why i don't like this series this kind of genre is i don't want to hate a child right yeah i don't want to feel that way against a child yeah so it just doesn't i don't know i feel like if diana would have made this for college yeah. Yeah. yeah like college students like they were trying to go for a grad scholarship or something like that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But just something that was not teen. Yeah. Not I high really... school related. Not yeah. dream crushing. You never get your chance to spread your wings because now you have this looming over you. Mm -hmm. But this really does fall in line with one of us is lying and there is someone inside your house by yeah. Stephanie Perkins. And then... Uh, so the, this book will go down in my mind as one of those YA thrillers. Yeah. Yeah. That was and mediocre. Exactly. Yeah. And our main character, Amber, I don't like her at all. I, <sighs> I hate that character. That is a main character that will go on my list of people I dislike 
so, so much. And I will never revisit or want another story from because she was just so, she had the ability. She had the resources, the insight from another character in the book to ask questions, to Mm -hmm. go to this meeting and ask, why, why did you want this? And she didn't. Um, Because the whole thing in the flashbacks is that um, to get into USC, um, our main character, Amber, uh, wanted to write original scores for a school play so that Mm -hmm. it would look good on her application. Which is really smart. (laughs) Which is really smart and really amazing. So she wants to get into the USC music program. So what she does is she tries to talk to Sasha and um, get in with the drama club because Sasha is the stage manager, I guess, and mm-hmm. would have uh, a say of what the play is that they're doing. So Amber meets her, says, no, let's do this. Like, let's go. I can do this. So Sasha's like, okay, yes, fine. You can do it. Well, then there's all this like crap. Like suddenly, as soon as Amber gets the score done for the play, then Sasha's like, well, the drama club wanted uh, it to be a musical. So can you add songs into Romeo and Juliet? Like when she's killing herself and the, the balcony scene, the, the drama, if you can't do it, then we're just going to do Grease. And that's what the drama kids want to do anyway. Mm-hmm. It's selfish little kids. Yes, exactly. So like, that's what I didn't understand is why are you not questioning things? Why mm-hmm. are there no questions? Mm-hmm. Young people are always asking effing questions. Yes. It's just, that just annoyed me. That part, that part in particular just like took me out of the book and made me so frustrated. I like your passion. I like your passion about it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Passion and action. Because that's what we do. We, you know, every, someone that's going to be watching this is going to like this book. They're going to, they're going to really enjoy it. Other people are going to be like, yeah, I totally feel what you feel. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's the, the power of these, these types of books is that we have the freedom to discuss what we don't like about a specific book or yes. genre. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think we did that well today, to be honest. Exactly. And I am going to shove this book. I'm going to shove it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I am going to give it probably like two on Goodreads. Sorry about it. I but- said a three and a half, but like that was being generous. That was because yeah. of Kate Rudd, honestly. I do. Kate Rudd did a fantastic job. Yeah. And she, she does a great job with all like John Green books and everything mm-hmm. else. So she's a really fantastic narrator. But phenomenal. I don't, she couldn't write the book. No, she couldn't. Was that think, emoji? <laughs> <laughs> I just think that if Diana would have written this from a different, from a, a 20 something year old perspective, it would have been perfect. It would have been fine. It yeah. would have been totally awesome because the writing was really well done it was like the the prose and the the use of language like it was really well done yeah i just really wish it was a different age range Mm -hmm. yeah same so Mm -hmm. yeah so we're going to shove it but if you enjoyed this book please let us know in the comments down below or if you did not enjoy this book please let us know what you didn't enjoy about the book uh, you can also find us on our various social medias. We are on Twitter at Audio Shelf Me, Instagram at Audio Shelf Me, and Facebook at Audio Shelf. And if you like this episode and you want more, please subscribe and click that little bell to get some notifications. Yes. All right. So, well, until next time. Bye. bye.